What's up you guys, Rex here. So I really hope some of you are watching this video because you're stressing out that come mid-April you have to narrow down to only three acceptances and then can't even imagine having to choose one school among all these amazing acceptances that you really love. But even if that's not you, this video might have some good things to keep in the back of your head as you're making a school list or attending second look or attending interviews at schools or just touring schools long before you ever apply. But this video will be mostly targeted at people who are asking, where should I go to medical school? I have a couple acceptances. How do I possibly decide? So first of all, breathe. You made it. It's a long application process. I'm sure it's been stressful for most people going through it, but you made it. You did so well in this application cycle that now you have multiple acceptances that you have to decide between. Maybe this never even crossed your radar that you thought you would have multiple acceptances to have to make a difficult decision. And I know you've probably been through a lot of difficult, stressful decisions already in this application cycle, and you're not ready for another one, but embrace it. Be thankful that you're in this position to have a difficult decision to make about where you're going to medical school because ultimately it is a hard decision and it's an important decision but these are good problems to have. So I hope this video can help you out. I'll specifically be touching on how maybe you want to consider factoring in the like rank or prestige of a school, how you may want to approach thinking about the finance aspect of deciding where to go to medical school, how you want to think about how your decision of medical school may impact your residency options, and lastly just some food for thought of thinking about what is going to be a good fit medical school for you. So first, how much should you factor in the ranking or prestige of a school when you're deciding where to go? I am a medical student. I am not a doctor yet. I'm not a residency director. I'm far from that. So I won't pretend I really even deserve to have a definitive opinion. But I've asked a lot of people this when I was deciding myself, and I got a wide range of opinions from people who are residency and fellowship directors to doctors to admissions directors, all kinds of different people. And so I, I don't know if there is a right answer. So I'll just share some of those opinions and some additional food for thought. So first of all, I don't believe there is a single bad medical school in the United States. Anywhere you got into is going to be somewhere that can give you a phenomenal education and prepare you to be an amazing doctor. Another thing is it's sort of something where once you're in medical school, nobody cares where you went to undergrad. Similarly, once you get into residency, nobody's going to care about where you went to medical school. It's just going to be you're in residency and that matters. And then once, you know, 10 years down the line when you're a practicing physician, no one asks their physician, oh, where'd you get your medical degree? Oh, where'd you do your residency? They, it doesn't matter that much. I have heard from one doctor that Maybe it does matter, but it sort of matters in the sense of where like, if it's not Johns Hopkins, Harvard, or Duke, it doesn't matter. So like there are a couple universities that have like big name weight behind them, but that's very subjective. Some people's big three that might have a lot of weight that they think about will help them improve their career are gonna be different than another person. So even that is subjective. And so there might be some truth to that, that like if you go to a top five school that might position you better in your career than like, a top 25 school, but I really don't think that there's much of a difference between like the number 25 school in the country and the number 45 school in the country. That besides maybe that like top upper echelon that is going to catapult your career through some amazing connections, I don't think that like having a big name behind you is gonna make a big difference. And even saying like, ooh, top five, that sort of is comical to me because that's constantly changing. And so there's a great example right now of where for reasons that I do not remotely understand or know why or even care about, Duke catapulted up to the number three school in the country according to US News for Research Medical Schools. I think they were like number 11 or number 12. And so that's not something that is all of a sudden changing anyone's career that, oh, they've graduated from Duke Medical School and now that it's ranked number three, they're gonna have all these doors open up. It's not changing anyone applying to residency that, oh, they wouldn't have gotten in, but oh, now Duke's number three. Now they're going to get in. It's not changing anyone in medical school. Like my medical school experience is no different from a week ago or two weeks ago, whenever the rankings came out, when Duke was like not a top 10 school, but almost a top 10 school. So now it's the top three school, like everything changes. And so there's no telling forward in your career of what is going to be the like top three schools and like Johns Hopkins. They always are going to be an amazing medical school and have an awesome reputation. And they fell out of the top five. That doesn't make them 
any worse of a school. So don't get too tied up into rankings of where like, oh, I'm deciding between these schools. This school's number six. This school's number eight. That does not make a difference. That should not be something you are making your decision on too closely of like, oh, let's track the rankings exactly. Things change. Ultimately, no patient is looking up what the rank of your medical school was. And your patient's opinion, in my opinion, is the opinion you should care about most because those are the people you will be serving as a doctor in the future. So now, money. Unfortunately, that is part of the world. We have to care about money. And so I see that there are two valid opinions that are sort of on the opposite ends of the spectrum. There are some people who are of the like Dave Ramsey camp, who I love Dave Ramsey overall, that, oh yeah, minimal debt, no matter what, I don't care what school you go to as long as it's the cheapest school available to you. And there's other people that are like, yeah, who cares? Like, just take on the loans, life will be fine. You'll pay it off over 20 years. It won't make a difference in your life whatsoever. I think in between those is sort of where I fall. That I think there is a difference in your just overall wellness and life satisfaction of like somehow getting through medical school completely debt free, whether that is through some awesome scholarships or maybe your parents can help you out $10,000 a year. And so a school is able to give you a lot of financial aid such that you can, your parents can help you cash flow through school. There's a big difference between being like totally debt free and having $50,000 in debt graduating medical school. Just emotionally, there is definitely a difference and that will impact your life. So that is something you should very much consider. But if you're sort of like pinching pennies, I don't think there's really any difference in your overall well-being and life satisfaction. If you're projecting forward, you'll graduate with $200,000 of debt at one school or $270,000 of debt at another school. That's not gonna change your life much. And I don't think this should be something you stress out a bunch about. I have a lot of plans to make several videos about finance and medicine and paying back student loans and how all of that works. And ultimately, I don't think, even if you have to go $450,000 in debt, that shouldn't be something that stresses you out. I absolutely would classify medical school debt as good debt that isn't something you should stress out about if it is through the federal government at a fixed interest rate and you have all of these opportunities, whether it is income-based repayment or the repay program or the option to defer payments during residency, you have a lot of options open to you to make that debt burden easier. And even if it's $450,000 in debt, you're still gonna have a lot of financial freedom and you're gonna be in the like 1% of America, like I don't care, it shouldn't be about money anyway. You're gonna be just fine no matter how much debt you take on. So I don't want that to be always on the forefront of your mind. It's something to consider and think about and think through, but it shouldn't be a source of stress when deciding where to go to medical school, in my opinion. Now, something to definitely really think about is how what medical school you might go to potentially could impact your chances of matching into residency. And this is something that is sort of developing as I speak, as far as step one is just going past fail. And people don't know how exactly that's gonna shift the residency application process to maybe be more based on the letter of recommendations you get versus hard test scores. Granted, step two is likely just gonna become the new step one, so that's still gonna be a factor, but maybe step two is gonna be pass fail in a few years. It's hard to tell, but that seems like it's the direction they're going. So potentially something to consider is like, where are you gonna get awesome letters of recommendation? So specifically, if you do know what residency you want to match into, I would encourage you to try to go to a medical school if you have that option, go to a medical school that has one of those residency programs at that university. For example, I wanna go into orthopedic surgery. It would be very difficult for me to get involved with orthopedic surgery research in medical school at a school that didn't have a residency program because they don't have residents and fellows doing all kinds of research, always looking for medical students to help them out. At Duke, that is something I have. And I also can build relationships with like residency directors or fellowship directors who might be much more well-known in the specific field that would look a lot better when applying to that residency program than if it was just a doctor that wasn't in that specific residency program. For example, if you are gonna care about rankings and really want to have some sort of quantitative comparison between schools, it might be something to consider is looking up how well ranked the actual residency program of the medical school you are thinking about attending is in the specific specialty you are interested in. Now, the most important thing I believe that you should be considering is what is going to be a good fit for you? Where are you gonna be happy during your four years? Because I absolutely think you can be 
full of joy and happiness and be relaxed and having just a great time during your four years of medical school. Don't think it's gonna be just some miserable grind where you have no free time that like, oh yeah, it doesn't matter if it's near the beach. I'm not going to the beach anywhere. I'm just gonna be studying all the time. That's just inaccurate. You are gonna have time to enjoy yourself if you want to. So think about where you're gonna be happy. And so that can start at a very basic level of geography. If you hate the cold, don't go somewhere in the north. If you hate humidity in the south, probably don't go somewhere in the south. That is something to consider. If you absolutely love food like I do, consider what restaurants are near campus or what nice fine dining is within 10 minute drive. Those things do add up and, and this is four years that you're gonna be spending there. It should be somewhere you enjoy. Now, even more important than that, I think is to consider the potential classmates you will have at that school. So really try to think back to your interview day. And I understand that depending on when you're watching this video, you might've had a very abnormal online interview experience and even an abnormal second look experience. But think about all of the people you got to interact with during your interview day and on your second look weekend. Those are your future classmates. They're people that you are gonna be learning with and working with and growing together. And those are people that might be your support network when you're struggling. So those are perhaps the most important thing to consider. Additionally, think about all the faculty you met. These are your future mentors and people that are gonna shape you into the doctor you want to be. And so regardless of any ranking and stuff like that, where are you gonna be happy? That's maybe more important than anything else. Additionally, some grab bag wild cards to think about if you're like flipping a coin between medical schools is thinking about the curriculum of, is it a school like Duke that has only one year in the classroom and then you get to go onto the wards? Is it the standard two years? Is it a year and a half? I know UNC is sort of a year and a half in between the one year and two year. Think about things like that. Think about what is anatomy dissection like? My greatest experience so far in medical school was getting to do a real cadaveric dissection for my anatomy lab. Some medical schools have this, some schools have that it's a prosected cadaver that you get to look at. Some medical schools are moving towards totally online. That is something to consider if you really want to go into surgery particular, in my opinion, that you should consider because that really is a foundational part of your medical school experience that could be really important to you. It might not mean anything to you. So if it's important to you, think about it, look up what the medical schools are like. Final thing is to consider what type of hospital this is. What is the population demographics of the people you are going to get to be serving? If you are really interested in emergency medicine and trauma, you want to go somewhere that is like a very large level one trauma center or something like that you probably don't want to go to a really small hospital that won't see a lot of cases and get referrals from all of the other local hospitals of the most difficult, unique cases. And those are the cases that are gonna really challenge you and help you grow. If you're really passionate about rural medicine, you probably don't wanna to go to a medical school in the middle of a city unless you have the opportunity to do a little bit of like away rotations in more rural settings if that's something you're passionate about. So consider the different opportunities and settings related to where you will be going to medical school and where you're gonna fit in and feel like home. Because again, medical school really should feel like home. These are four years that shouldn't be of like misery and nonstop grind. Medical school can be a ton of fun and I'm having a ton of fun because I really feel like I am where I'm meant to be and I wake up so thankful every day because I get to go to the medical school that I am at because it's such a good fit for me. And it was an incredibly difficult decision for me to actually decide that Duke was the place to be. So if you wanna see a video where I go through my decision process, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to make that video. If you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, I'd also love to hear about them down below. I'll read and respond to every single comment. If you wanna catch all of my future uploads, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'll have a link to a playlist over there on the right of other videos about the medical school application process. If you like the video, like the video. If you dislike the video, dislike the video. Until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great.